I want to go ahead and get started. Mine's just a brief introduction. I, I, I don't want to take too much from Charlotte's time, uh, but a, a little bit about the regulatory scheme. Uh, pharmaceutical waste is a very complex problem. I, I think I've covered all the uh, uh, administrative things. The one thing I want, though, some of you in the audience out there, and I see that there's Frequently, one of you in this knows more about this subject than I do, and I, and I would love to be replaced. Uh, uh, so, and more and more, we, we want more and more people, to, you know, volunteer. If you think you feel comfortable with something and getting up and being a, 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 giving a presentation, please do so. Let, let somebody on the board know. Uh, pharmaceutical waste, I just do that. It's regu there's a whole bunch of regulatory agencies that, that, uh, that, that direct them. Years ago, we were looking at this, and I've sat through presentations with uh, the DEA, the Pharmacy Board, uh, DTSC, and California Department of Public Health in there, and what they were telling the hospitals, the people that manage different varieties and everything, you know, you listen to it, and say, well, some of these are mutually exclusive. There is no way that they can meet all these regulatory requirements, you know, uh, and so there's been a, a movement, uh, a lot of legislation you notice that the drug enforcement agency is sponsoring these take back events that that's from some pressure on, on them said we can't give people no solution you know you 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 can't that that's not acceptable to say well there's nothing you can do uh legally uh with these ways so it's, it's a very complicated regulatory scheme as soon as i'm done talking uh we're, we're going to uh have uh, and you, you know, I'm from California, uh, and I w in San Diego. How many people regulate medical waste in here in the room? Okay, just a few. Most of the hazardous waste is pretty much everybody, right? Yeah. And so uh, said, we know medical waste. I know hazardous waste. And how come this woman, in that time, I think was from Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin? Oh, not you and Jason are both Packer fans, probably, huh? I, you know. How does she know more about this than I do? If you if you want to look, you know, you don't need a resume or background. Just Google pharmaceutical waste or Charles. But it's, she, her name's going to pop up. She she's really uh, we're very lucky to have her here. I'm talking about a decade ago when I was trying to look into this and figure it out. And I said she knows more about the California scheme than I do and how all of these things fit in. And a lot of, of course, a lot of the complexities uh, come from the the federal regulations, uh, Resource Conservation Recovery Act, RICRA. But these are some of the terms. And Charlotte pointed out to me, you know, really, recycling doesn't really fit for pharmaceutical waste. We don't recycle pharmaceutical waste. I mean, but, uh, and so it, it's a regulatory cat category that I thought of. But so that doesn't really happen. Uh, and now, COOPAs, we look at it as a hazardous waste. And, and we work closely. I see... Uh, Roger, are you the only one from DTSC in the room now? I, uh, but but with, we work closely. DTSC is the lead agency to provide guidance. You know, like I said, we've got a variety of experts in the room, but I, uh, Roger's more of a field manager. He's more like us than uh, uh, one of the uh, Sacramento ones. And then there's some of us, I know that San Joaquin County, Orange County, San Diego also do medical waste, so there's an overflow there, and I want to explain that. But the, the hazardous waste, as you know, is regulated by the federal government, uh, Resource Conservation Recovery Act, and then in California, it's the Hazardous Waste Control Law. Uh, and and non-RICRA hazardous waste is what, you know, RICRA waste is federal waste, and non-RICRA is California waste. Uh, now, and I'm going to go through this very quickly, but in California, we passed legislation uh, with the uh, thought process behind it to make this easier for the generators as being the being medical facilities, if we had non-RICRA or California hazardous waste that was a pharmaceutical waste, that could be a medical waste. And now, and then I'm going to go through it very rapidly about how we got to that. Uh, it was in Senate Bill 1966. It was passed in 1995. Senator Kathy Wright was the author. Uh, and this, the, this is from the legislative analysis, that, that program I put down there. But uh, pharmaceutical waste that are non-RICRA hazardous waste are identified as, as medical waste in California. This, this law changed that. Uh, and this is the actual language of the law. 
It's waste that is hazardous only because it's comprised of pharmaceuticals. And th that notwithstanding in there, for most medical waste, there's a two-part test. It has to be used in healthcare, and then it has to be sharps, biohazardous, some other uh, categories. In this case, if it's, if it's a pharmaceutical waste that is hazardous, then it, uh, a non ricra hazardous, then it's a medical waste in California. I'm just walking through the law here, and I don't need to read it to you. But. And for those of us that, that regulate medical waste, you need, you need to keep in mind that two-part, it's not a two-part, two-pronged test for medical waste for pharmaceuticals. All it has to be is non ricra hazardous and a pharmaceutical. And one more time, different sections of the law, pharmaceutical waste does not include RICRA hazardous waste or, or radioactive waste. And that's where I'm going to is a two-pronged test. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I'm, uh, again, purposely going through this quickly as an introduction because I, I don't want to subtract from Charlotte's time. Now, the one thing we've got to watch, not subject to Chapter 6.5, means, of course, it's not California hazardous waste law. And, and Senator Wright, in this letter, emphasized that there was some confusion there about the way it's written, that we would assume that all pharmaceutical waste is a medical waste. And she said that's not the intent. The intent was to capture non-RICRA hazardous waste and make it a medical waste. Pharmaceutical waste that is a solid waste, it doesn't exhibit the characteristic of, a, of typically toxicity is what's going to make it. Uh, it's either going to be a listed RICRA waste or exhibit the characteristic for, in California. Uh, if it doesn't meet, rise above those thresholds, then it's just a solid waste. It's just trash, like your paper uh, evaluation. So that's why we like this what specific, like the stuff that's going to come from uh, Japan. That, Pretty much restating what I just said. Pretty clear to everybody. I don't. Okay, so Charlotte's going to go into this in great detail, and those clickers, or she's going to ask you questions to see if you're paying attention. And they're a lot of fun because uh, we can see you can see what every you know. It's like the the TV shows. What's what does the audience vote? So uh, you can see uh, you don't your individual vote your. Or, or, or selection, uh, does, we, we don't identify them down to person, we see what the majority in the rooms are doing. But uh, RICRA has this pharmaceutical waste has to be managed as a, a RICRA has this waste. The non-RICRA has to be managed as a medical waste. And if you're not aware, this uh, retrograde is, a, would probably, is the, the definition that would fit into reverse distribution, which is, we're, I can remember inspecting hospitals and for the reverse distribution, what expired pharmaceuticals, things they couldn't issue more, they would have what is called a re reverse distributor. And again, Charlotte knows a lot more about this than I do, but you know, they have to be registered by DEA, is registered the correct? Okay. State Board and DEA, and then, but they get a million dollars credit back a year. So, I mean, you know, that, that doesn't sound like sham to me. I mean, significant amounts of money coming back through that process. And it's a way to manage it, too. Uh, this was uh, just a chart. I love to show this. This is because, you know, a doctor, a nurse, a uh, medical technician, they're supposed to be primarily focused on medical care. Uh, but this is how they, all the different medical, or different categories of waste, you know, a diagram. Well, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. So give an idea of the complexity uh, of these types of regulations. And, uh, and we, we really kind of put them through the, the ringer. And uh, I am hope eventually that we can, and most of this comes from the federal level. This, we're not California doing it to them. It, it's federal. Uh, but but we would like to see this more streamlined. And, and we actually passed a law this year that helped a bit. And then, that was a rough introduction. The only thing I want you to get from this is non-RICRA hazardous waste pharmaceuticals or medical waste. 
uh, Rikwa or Rika. And Charlie's going to go into this a little uh, in great detail. And what I realized uh, when I was looking and I was thinking about this, how, how, why did she know so much more than I do uh, when I'm out regulating these facilities every day? It's because Charlotte could go to jail. Uh, you know? and, then, and, so, and, she's, and she doesn't want any of her customers or clients to go to jail either. So she's uh, very concerned about making sure that they do everything right. Uh, I think she'll take a very conservative approach, as you would too, you know, because uh, they don't want to give bad advice. Whereas if we're taking an enforcement action, some of these guidance documents interpretations are, I, I, I would hate to uh, argue them to a, a jury, but we've got some DAs in here that would do it. So, I mean, uh, uh, so, but at any rate, uh, we're very lucky to have what I think is the expert in the United States about to give you a presentation, and we've got the, the little uh, Insta polls or whatever those devices are correctly called to, to keep you engaged. I think it'll be fun. I uh, also think it's a little hot and stuffy in here, but that may be me. Okay, I, I'll, I'll go when I leave. I'll go and check on that and see if we can't get a little bit cooler in here. Uh, if, if not, I'd like to uh, welcome Charlotte Smith. <laughs>